This is the ROV that I made about six years ago. It's made out of PVC pipe and it uses Sevlor trolling motors for the main propulsion. It runs off of batteries. There's a battery on each side. Uh, each tube has three sealed lead acid batteries in there. The batteries last about four or five hours if you're using the motors and the lights uh, and the cameras. If you're just using the lights and the cameras, you can get uh, quite a bit longer out of it. The ROV has four vertical thrust motors, two on each side, and two horizontal thrust. The main tube it has about six circuit boards in there that controls everything. I'd never made an ROV before, so everything on this thing was thought up from scratch. I just figured maybe there could be some people that might get some ideas off of it or find out how not to do stuff just by looking at this thing and seeing how I did it. The ROV will go down supposedly to 300 feet. We've pressure tested the parts individually into a little pressure tank we've got and we can simulate 300 feet on this. It has three cameras on board one in the front, one in the back, and then one on the bottom so we can look straight down. There's also a compass so we can kinda get an idea what direction we're heading. The compass is actually a Dinsmore uh, module that interfaces with one of the processors that we have on the circuit board. Now the reason I have the the ROV main tube open right now is earlier this spring we took it out onto a frozen lake and put it underneath the ice and when I was bringing it up I was kind of careless and I brought it up kind of fast and hit the bottom of the ice and there was a stick protruding down and the stick fouled the prop which no big deal it blew a fuse on the circuit board but I have to open up the main tube just to get to it so what I'm going to do is improve some of the boards by changing out the fuses with auto reset uh, devices. So I thought maybe I'd go ahead and make a video and just show how I made the boards and how they work just in general. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how the circuits work. Okay, I made a real fancy chart here to, sh to show you uh, the basic layout of the whole system. Starts out we have a joystick that is connected to a laptop and on that laptop we're running a small visual basic program that I wrote that interfaces a serial port. From the serial port we go through 500 feet of cat5 cable down to the ROV and it connects right up to a main board down there that's also running a processor that interfaces with the serial port. The video signal that comes back comes up and it goes to a separate laptop and I do the recording on that one. In addition to the main board, I have the other boards that control the motors and the lights and the camera. This spring when I fouled the prop on uh, the ROV when I brought it up underneath the ice, I actually damaged this board in the process. The fuse blew like it was, it was supposed to, but uh, obviously it didn't blow fast enough because it burned up some of the trace lines on the back. I actually replaced or repaired this board and it works again but I'm going to upgrade them. What I'm going to do is get rid of the fuses and replace them with poly switches. That way it'll just automatically reset and I don't have to open the main tube up, yank the board out and replace the fuse. The first thing I did to make the circuit board is to take my circuit and using a small uh, circuit board design program I laid out a circuit board. Okay, this is actually laid out now to create four duplicate boards. From there I take and I transfer it over to some press and peel circuit board transfer film. Okay. And once I've got that, then I have to apply it onto the circuit board. This is two ounce copper clad circuit board. I'll only use half of it. I can actually get two boards out of that piece. 
once it's transferred over it looks like that so the next step now is to put it and soak it in some ferric chloride to remove all the remaining copper that I don't want on there so that's what we'll do next all right we'll go ahead and dump it in the tank and let her sit in there for probably 20 minutes at least Okay, the board's finished. I just need to clean it up and then I can start drilling some holes. I have the board just about finished up now. I've got all the components soldered on there. Uh, all I need to do now is test it. Before I do, I'll give you a quick rundown on the basic operation of, of this board and how I designed it. Start out with a PIC processor. That gives me the serial port uh, interface. That drives uh, four optocouplers. The reason I do that is because I have a dedicated power supply for all of my processors. That prevents uh, any surges and spikes coming from the motors uh, running. They have their own separate power supply. The optocouplers uh, then drive a couple of things. They control the relays and they also control this op amp which is a quad op amp and I create my pulse width modulation from that. From there it goes into two hex vets, one for each channel. They're 30 amp into a poly switch which I just replaced my fuses with and then uh, it outputs there. I have a flyback diode to prevent any uh, voltage coming back in and destroying the circuit. Alright, we'll hook it up to the ROV and give it a quick test. The ROV is energized now. I made up a set of cables, uh, one for the communication line, one for the power supply and a return line for the load and I run it over to the bench. That way I can work on the circuit board over here. It makes it a lot easier. I also set up my laptop, which is my controller for the ROV. And it's ready to go. And you can kind of get a basic idea how it works. I set a joystick up to use it for the controller. You can, this is, uh, would be controlling the motors right now, is what that's doing. Forward and reverse, or up and down. Okay, we've got it all hooked up here. So we'll go ahead and test it now. The meter on the left is showing the uh, voltage level. The meter on the right showing the amperage, the draw from that uh, light that we have hooked up as a load. The oscope showing the actual pulse width that we're getting out of the board. So as I push the stick forward, you can see I'm is getting closer and closer to a straight line right there that's full power Well, it seems to be working good. The next thing I'm going to do is hook it up to a motor that's in a pressure tank, and we can actually test the board with a motor that's under load. Okay, we have one of our test motors hooked up now, and we'll drop it into the tank and then pressurize the tank, and we should be able to simulate uh, what the amperage draw is with the motor at a depth of about 250 feet.
All right, first thing we're gonna do is get a baseline reading without any pressure in the tank. It's just in the water. So this is full power to it right now, and we're pushing just a little over two amps right now. All right, we've got 20 PSI in there now. And we're, our amperage is still about the same, so now we'll go ahead and turn it up real slow. Alright, so now we're at about a hundred foot depth the equivalent of a hundred feet and we're drawing a little over four amps okay there's a hundred psi that's the equivalent of about two hundred and thirty feet uh, as far as depth in the water still drawing about five and a half amps now still at about a hundred psi uh, the seals in the motor evidently are holding up good the circuit board uh, is working good. It seems to be controlling everything well. All right, it looks good. We'll take everything out, put everything in the ROV, and start buttoning it up. All right, the ROV is put back together. Uh, we're just going to test the controller and the interface, make sure everything's still working. It's our vertical thrust motors. And now our horizontal. All right, everything's looking good. We'll put it in the tank now.
All right, the ROV seems neutrally buoyant now. So we can take it out of the tank and hopefully we'll have it out in a lake under some ice pretty soon.